thing and close $3,500 deal or is in the process of. So I highly recommend it. But ladies and gents, this is how to prep your client for low quality leads so they don't bitch about low quality leads. There's a couple of things as concepts we need to master and understand beforehand. First things first is something called Michael Porter's Five Forces. Michael Porter is the guy that teaches consultants how to consult. And not like our consulting where we're like, oh, Sam Oven's spending $100,000 a day on ads. Oh my God, he's profitable, that's amazing. I mean the people that he trains on how to consult are like doing a billion dollars a month with a B. Like Ernest and Young, McKinsey, Boss Consulting, um, Bain and Company with like $12.7 billion of the consulting piece. Like they, they all master this understanding. And if you want to spend more time, effort, energy on mastering this, uh, you should look up Michael Porter's Five Forces. It's Strategic Forces. It's really, really smart. And it's really, really cool. And it talks about how you can have a company making an F ton of money and another company making almost no money. It has nothing to do with their marketing. It has nothing to do with their sales. It has nothing to do with these like weird tactics or even things that are strategies. It has everything to do with the stuff that surrounds the company. It's why there will always be monopolies for, for telecom and utilities. Why there will always be small people in an agency space and there'll never be a billion dollar agency. Why Apple will always be worth way too much money um, and the structural forces that changed behind Dell to make it go from all the way up here to all the way down here. Like having an understanding of this is why, hold on, why businesses work and why some businesses don't. And we're not gonna go into in depth or in detail, we're just gonna train our brain on thinking like this. So for example, let's just say a company's profit ability. Let's do this, this is a, any company in the world, just imagine, I don't care if it's oil, steel, agency, booksellers, Amazon, whatever it is, right? Your company's profitability as a philosophy applying to this agency, uh, applying to this lesson right now, has nothing to do with how good of a salesperson you are. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about how great your product is. Uh, it's not what we're talking about. We're talking about something bigger. We're not talking about strategy or tactics. We're talking about market forces. And the whole philosophy behind this is that like, Market forces are probably what's going to meet or beat or break your business many times faster than you can possibly imagine. So first things first is the threat of new entrants. Again, we're not going to detail this just to warm our brains up on like this type of line of thinking. So the ability for another person, another company to come into your space. This is why the vast majority of actors make no money because I'm an actor too. Oh, you got a gig for a thousand? I'll do it for $990. I'm an actor too. I'll do it for $998. 997. It's the same structural reason why agencies will never be a billion dollar business because anybody could start an agency. That's just how it works, right? So this kind of like goes into the factor of your profitability as an agency. Like let's say you do manage to land a highly profitable 90% margin and you're trying to grow and word gets out and you do 100,000, 200, 3,000 dollars a month. People can see your ads, copy and paste. Now what? right? Now there's another agency competing against you and your business and you're going to have a bad time. It's going to decrease your profitability and ultimately have, uh, again, a bad time. Here's another one right here. Suppliers. We'll put bargaining power of suppliers, just like this. Like, can you boss around the people that give you stuff that you can sell? Most of us spend our money on Facebook. Can we boss around Facebook? Probably not. Intel spends two to three billion dollars a month on suppliers. Can a supplier can a supplier beat around Intel? Probably not. Intel will always have more profitability than its suppliers. Um, let's say that I wanted to start a carpet cleaning company, and I went to some of the suppliers. Was like, I want to buy your machine, but I'm only going to buy it for like you know, 10% off the, the machine guy is gonna be like, well, tough shit, there's another carpet that wants to buy it. The ability for you to boss around or bargain with suppliers increases or decreases your profitability. Here's another one right here. Substitutes, or like the threat of substitutes. Threat of substitutes. Look, Mr. Johnson, I hear you loud and clear, but this is the only cancer treatment in the world and there's nothing you can do about it, you have to pay for it. What are you gonna do? There's no other substitutes. Meanwhile, if, if paper towels increases their prices too much, now I'm just gonna get napkins instead. 
okay. Like if, if peanut butter is, is way too expensive, I'm not gonna buy peanut butter anymore. I'll just get something else. Something else that's on the shelf. Um, if iPhones increase their price by 50% overnight, I'm just gonna get a different phone. End of discussion. The ability for the consumer to switch. If I cannot switch and I have to buy the cancer treatment for a million dollars, now the pharmaceutical company is more profitable. If I can just switch to a generic, there you go. Same thing with like, uh, like the generics, genericing of Viagra. Like I forget the name of the company, but they used to be massively profitable and now you can get generic Viagra. I can just switch off the brand name and you're done and you're good. Nothing you can do about it. Here's another one right here. And this is the bargaining power of buyers. Can somebody come in and offer and beat you around so much that you lose profitability. And as an agency, we kind of experience this a lot where the, the client's like, you know, I don't want to pay your $2,000 a month fee. You know, we're only going to be paying you, uh, what's it called? 1800. Oh yeah, sure. I'll take that deal. And I've taken those deals before, but the end result is like this type of structural understanding of market forces. Again, not tactics, not strategy, market forces. This is a company's profitability. If you are like um, Amazon, okay, you have massive profitability on your AWS side, not in your like normal side, your Amazon Web Services, because honestly, like there's very few substitutes. It takes a lot of money to compete with Amazon AWS systems. They are massively powerful there with their uh, buying power, or like, their buyers cannot negotiate with them, and their suppliers cannot negotiate with them. So they are much more profitable. If you are an iron smelter and you put a billion dollars into putting an iron smelting company in Pennsylvania, I don't know anything about iron, but I'm just kind of making it up. And nobody else could start an iron smelting company for whatever reason, and they had to buy your iron, and you're the biggest guy in the block, and the people that bought your steel were small people, and the people supplying your small people, hey, there you go. This happens all with chemical-based companies, pharmaceutical-based companies. This is how it works. The crazy part about all this, and this is the kicker that applies to everybody right here, it's the same for your clients and your ads. The same philosophy applies. There is stuff outside of your control, outside of your agency and your ads and your company's ability to convert. It has everything to do with market forces entirely outside of your control, entirely outside of your client's control. If you are running ads for chiropractor, there's 55 chiropractors. The threat of substitutes is huge. If you could become a chiropractor in six months or less, they've got a six month time frame, and that's it to make an F ton of money and then somebody else comes in. If the people buying chiropractor services have a lot of bargaining power and the suppliers to chiropractor services have a lot of bargaining power, which they do, your chiropractor will have less profitability. You give them a thousand clients, they still have less profitability versus let's say a heavy construction equipment manufacturing company. You ain't gonna get that crane anywhere else. There's four crane companies in the world. You can't start a crane company. Do you know, it takes like decades. The suppliers of crane companies, they're all small businesses. The bargaining power of buyers, they're all small businesses. So the crane company's profitability is huge. So you run an ad, you get them one client, that's like the best agency ever. There's more to do with this stuff than your actual agency. It's really interesting. It has to pick, it has, a, uh, it has to deal with picking your agency's industry. We're not going into that. This is just to warm up our brain on like the forces, right? So what are some forces that make or break the campaign? This is where your brain's supposed to kick in, ladies and gents. This, this is where we are going to be stepping outside of tactics, outside of strategy, and thinking in terms of larger market forces, thinking in terms of stuff that your business is doing, things that affect your campaign, not Facebook. We're not talking about Facebook. Nope. We're not talking about the cost per click or the click-through rate. We're not talking about the creative. That is strategy and tactics. I want to talk about something bigger, market forces. Let's think about the forces behind your businesses or your client's business. What forces, what things are they doing or are they not doing that make or break their campaign? 
I think it'll be fun if we challenge our brain a bit and say, okay, what are some forces that make or break my client's campaign? Some forces that make or break my client's campaign. There's no good answer here. This is part of the exercise of saying, how do we practically deal with low quality leads? This is the framework. This is, we're getting there. Again, this is the warm up our idea of saying, all right, maybe there's stuff outside of what we know. Hmm. Is there stuff outside of what we know? I'll tell you right here, client's ability to upsell. My client can't upsell, my campaign will never work. I don't care if I get a thousand leads of people walking in, client's like, nobody bought my next tier stuff, I'm screwed. Forces that make or break my client's campaign, irrespective of my performance. Irrespective of my performance. Client's ability to upsell. Uh, the going rate for my client's services or product. How fast do my clients, customers buy? See what's going on here? These are all things outside of my agency's ability to control that directly affect my ability, my campaign's ability to perform, my client's ability to upsell, the going rate for my clients and services product, how fast do my customers buy? There's other stuff in here, and if you wanna get granular and weird and specific, this is one of them. Is my client, front desk smiling and people walk in. All this stuff is outside of my control. The idea of market force is something I can't see or touch or taste or control, but it's somehow affecting me. Just like if there was too much traffic, what am I gonna do? I'm screwed. These all apply to your clients' campaigns performance. And if that analogy didn't make sense, imagine if like you're going on a road trip, you can't control traffic. You can leave early or leave late. You're like, well, I guess I got there. Cool. I don't care how fast we're going. There's traffic. It's the same exact thing here. Forces that make or break outside of your client's campaign, the client's ability to upsell the going rate, how fast the customers buy, is my front desk smiling when they walk in? You want to hear some other weird stuff? How many of you people actually looked at your client's actual location? Distance to dream clients. I have a client in Kansas City, Missouri. They set up the best personal training, physical therapy clinic in the entire United States. Okay. How far away are your dream clients? Oh, they're all sports teams. Okay. And how many sports teams live within a 30 minute drive of you? None, they'll come to us, okay, sure. Here's another one right here. How easy is it to walk in? Hey, you know what? Uh, I'm so happy that we sent you all these people today. Um, I got a question for you. How come I'm getting all these complaints, Mr. Johnson? Like all these clients are saying you're too busy. Oh, because we only have two parking spots. Yeah, and you scheduled like six people. You, you guys are doing great, but I can't renew it because we only have two parking spots and everybody hates us. Yeah, sorry. What? You have two parking spots? That's it? So you take one, and then you can only take one client at a time? What the hell is wrong with you? Here's another one. Clients max capacity. Oh, you know what? I'm super happy that you're running ads for us and we're a martial arts company and we've got a whole bunch of students and all that fun stuff. And you know, we went from 20 clients to 30 clients and, and they're renewing and we're happy and we don't need your services anymore. What are you talking about? What the hell? We got you 10 clients. Why are you canceling? You know, we, we only have room for 30 people. You lost even though you did everything right. Like, isn't that nuts? What's another one? Give me another one. 
right here, right now. For everybody listening and watching, what are some forces that are outside of your control that are not related to Facebook that make or break your client's campaign? Front desk, smiling, how easy to walk and distance to stream clients, upsell, the going rate, max capacity, how fast do the customers buy? Tell me right here, right now, has there ever been something outside of your control that caused your client's campaign to work well or not? What do you think? Let's fill in the blank. I've got a couple right here, right now. Here's one for you. Reputation, we had a dentist in New York. Didn't tell us he has the worst reputation on the block. We literally had people LOLing on his ads. I was like, why? He's like, oh yeah, this person hates me. Why does this person hate you? You know, because I kind of like messed up his stuff. I was like, how many times have you messed up their stuff? A bunch. We look up his Google reviews, he's got a one star. Oh my God, like what kind of ads could we possibly run? Like he is hated in his community. Phone skills. We had a client, again in New York, same client, customer calls and said, hey, I want to buy the equivalent of $5,000 worth of stuff and I wanna come in tomorrow, what do you have? The front desk says, hey, can I put you on hold? What? Oh my God, we're doing great work, client still bombs. Yeah. Somebody says the client can't close or book the job, yeah. Here's another one. Easy, yes. Is it easy for dream clients to do business with this customer? Yeah, like how easy is it for somebody to say, yes, I wanna take a next step? Do they have something like that's less than 50 bucks, 250 bucks, 250 bucks? Oh, no, 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 we only charge $5,000. Okay, how many times have you sold your $5,000 thing the past 30 days? Once. Great. Here's another one. Somebody says, Car dealerships down payment is super high. It's hard to do business, right? Here's another one. Old, unwanted products or programs. Wait, you're trying to get me to sell this thing and it hasn't sold in how long? What? No, I'm not selling that. Well, that's what we hired you for. Well, tough fucking shit. You haven't sold it, what makes you think I can? You're a marketing company. You've never sold it, you have an unproven offer. Get out of here. I can run the best ads in the world. You can't sell stuff. Somebody says the clients wanna lose money to get people in the door, yeah. Like all this stuff, these are all forces that make or break your client's campaign that structurally cause you to lose. I'm gonna say it again. These are all structural forces equivalent to market forces right here that cause you to lose or win. Somebody says, I have an agent who only wants leads in one town. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Have a good time. I can't help you. I'll sell you, sell you a course, see you later, goodbye. I can't service your account. Some clients aren't a good fit for marketing. Just like some weight loss clients aren't a good fit for weight loss. You should have gotten surgery, not a personal trainer. So all this stuff ties in with your ability to actually perform. This is not Facebook stuff. This is not ad stuff. This is not the picture, the button. This is not the call to action. Learn more versus apply now. I don't give a shit. This is what billion dollar companies talk about. This is what McKinsey and Bain and BCG and Ernest and Young, companies that are doing a billion dollars a month, this is what they think about before they take on a client. Right here, Joshua Centers says, I always tell people, our job as marketers is to amplify results, not create results. Yeah. So if you have a client that's like, it's very far, if you have a client that's very far from their dream clients, they sell old unwanted products or programs, the front desk isn't smiling, it's hard to walk in, they cannot upsell, they have horrible reputation, bad phone skills, a hard, I was gonna say hard no, it's a hard yes, the going rate is too low, they cannot take a lot of clients, and it takes forever for a client to buy their stuff. What is a marketer gonna do? Yeah. Oh, I know. 
you're going to sell them a thing and then freak out and tittle with a two to three percent win on trying to figure out how to get your cost bleach from ten dollars to nine dollars. Meanwhile, I'm looking at this and I say, Look, Mr. Johnson, the reason why your car wash or your bike shop isn't working, of all these forces right here, do you really think it's your campaign? Or do you think it's hard for someone to drop 10 grand on a bike right out of the gate, huh? Maybe we need to go from a hard no to an easy yes. Is there an easy way to get somebody in the door experiencing your stuff? So instead of setting expectations, Mr. Johnson, somebody's going to come in and buy a $10,000 bike from you, why don't we put them on a bike ride? If we just got 30 people going on a bike ride, do you think eventually one person buy a $10,000 bike if they're like, yeah. So I'm not looking at Facebook ads. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at market forces. Stuff that makes or breaks my client's campaign without regard to Facebook ads. Yeah. And in my space, through my new agency, we are finding time and time and time again, winning for our clients is this, this, this. These are our clients' forces outside of our control. Entirely outside of our control. Same campaign, we can run it for a guy on Miller 92nd, the campaign totally bombs. Same campaign for a guy on Miller 93rd, the campaign goes to the roof. What's the difference? It's not me, it's the client, it's them and their market forces. One client has all this stuff, another client does not. We had the same problem with car washes. We have one car wash that would shoot through the roof. Just north of Texas, I forget the name of the city, Woodlands or something like that. Most profitable location. It's crazy. Same campaign as the campaign down the street in downtown Miami. Same exact campaign. That campaign was bombing. The one in Houston was working. Is the difference my campaign? Or is the difference the fact that the one in downtown Miami is in a touristy spot where nobody brings their cars anyway because they're all going there by bus. And the location in Houston, Texas is suburban mall Momsville and everybody's got SUVs and minivans covered in Cheetos. Look at that. Short distance of dream clients. It's easy to walk in because it's next to a mall at the front. Literally, hey, we'll valet your service and car wash it for $45. Great. I'm super happy to serve you with a smile on her face and it's super easy for clients to buy. And you know what, they had 55 spots. This one has four. Same exact campaign. Again, the exercise at this point is how do we prep our client for low quality leads? Well, first things first, we had to apply this concept to here and now. You're all going, okay, Jeff, what about low quality leads? This is what you're thinking right here. And for the smart people in the room, you're already making this connection. People that aren't, we'll get you there. What are some forces that make or break for some forces that make low quality leads. What's going on here? I hope your brains are turning real fast. Going, oh, oh, now we see what we're doing. We're gonna fill in the blanks. What are some forces that make low quality leads? Your campaigns quality of the lead. What makes a low quality lead? I don't know. Maybe one of them is the, the ease of signing up. If it's too easy to sign up as a lead, okay. That's in my control, cool, awesome. Uh, the offer, cool. That's a market force maybe, uh, maybe that's a agency force, maybe that's a client force, maybe it's a market force. But hey, this is part of trying to figure out what makes a low quality, maybe the offer, right? 
maybe it's too easy to sign up and the offer is too good to be true. Okay. The follow up. Cool. The prepay. Here are some other forces that make a low quality lead. I got one for you. How long has the lead known about the business? They don't know about it, it's a low quality lead. Okay, what else you got? Give me some more stuff. For everybody watching right here, right now, what are some forces do you think genuinely know or believe might make for a low quality lead? By the way, if you don't know this answer, this is probably why you're generating low quality leads. Well, ladies and gents, what are some forces that make a low quality lead? The ease of signing up, the offer, the follow-up, the prepay, how long has the lead known about the business? Okay, cool. We'll get there, keep going guys, bring them in. I got another one for you. Education to the lead. Are we educating the lead? Are we telling them how it works, why it works, all that fun stuff? We're just saying, good luck, call the client. We got another one. Somebody says income. I hear you loud and clear. I agree completely. How about distance? Did they prepay? Income of the lead. How much is the offer? Somebody says, no intention behind signing up. Cool. Let's put that on here. Intention. As in, did they really want it? We'll put this in. Did they really want it? Like that. We got another question, which is landing page of the home page or website. I agree loud and clear, but I'm trying not to get particularly technical. So I'm not gonna put in like landing page or thank you page or bot or Facebook lead form. I'm trying to be a little bit more consultative and non-technical, but the answer should be on here. I'm just not gonna put it on there. Somebody says, how relevant is the offer or lead to the service? Cool. Let's say, Is it relevant? Somebody says qualifiers in the ad, like pricing in the images. So income of lead, did they want it? Did they prepay? Is it relevant? You know what? I think that if we put a price in there, let's see, how much is the offer? And did they know? Somebody else says low quality leads can be due to a low quality landing page, lack of information reputation. There you go. I agree 100%. Somebody says leads need want versus need is not deep enough. I like that one. Is it want, need, or desire? Somebody says the sales process. I think that's right. I'm gonna put that in here too. Sales process. So if your client sales process involves getting a client at 27 bucks and then having a natural conversation to 500 bucks, that's cool. But all of this, and this is really a shorthand version of like, look, this is what makes low quality leads, Mr. Johnson. I just put 20 of them on here. These are some market forces that make a low quality lead. Let me ask you this, Mr. Johnson. Are we 
educating the lead before they actually sign up? No, we're not, okay. Do we know that the lead knows how much the offer is in the price? No. Is this really something that they want, need, or desire? Do they have enough money to spend it? Is it easy to sign up? Do they know how long you've been in business? Do they really want it? Do they prepay? Is it relevant to what they want? What's the distance between the lead and the business? And do you have a sales process behind it? Do you have the follow-up? These are all part of low quality leads. If this is not good, you will have a not good lead. No other way around it. Chances are, by the way, you are letting your clients dictate to you what should be done in the marketing. Chances are your client has no idea how to create a high quality lead. If they did, they would be doing it. And you don't know either. If you did, you'd be doing it. So it's literally the blind leading the blind. You're probably running, for example, let's just say a very easy to put up on the wall, $21 kickstart, cool, it works, break your brain, oh my God, this is awesome. But you're not doing anything else here. This is why campaigns burn out. This is why businesses switch agencies. And the agencies that have a structural understanding akin to market forces, market forces, market forces. This is stuff outside of the actual camp client campaign. Outside of the client campaign. I don't care how good you are at Facebook ads. If you are running a Facebook ad, it's easy to sign up to low quality people that have low to no income, don't know how much it is, have no education, they're far away from the business, they didn't prepay and they had no idea what they did, you are gonna have a bunch of shitty clients and a bunch of shitty leads. And that's what happens. I will hear horror stories from agencies that are like, you know, I ran a $21 special, uh, cool, I did that, um, and uh, all these people are too far away, nobody's picking up the phone. Okay, so you probably made it too easy to sign up. What do you mean? Yeah, make it harder to sign up. What does that mean? Well, you're just, just asking name, number, and email. That's a low quality lead on a spectrum. You've only addressed that box. You have to address other boxes. Why don't you just make it harder to sign up? Oh, that would ruin our cost per lead. Who the fuck cares about a cost per lead? You spent $700, nobody came in. Make it harder to sign up. Name, number, and email is not sufficient anymore. Have something higher up. That's one of your levers. Levers that increase the quality of your leads. And I'm trying to remove any technical mumbo jumbo. I'm not trying to say do a landing page idiot or do these questions idiot. I'm not trying to say give your end customers a course area that have to go through before they schedule. I'm trying to provide a structural understanding. A structural understanding. If it's too easy to sign up and the income is low, really low quality and they're really far away, clients can be like, these are the worst leads ever. But if they are people within a serviceable zone, cool. And they have to ask or answer four or five questions before they sign up, cool. You can ask literally on the form, do you really want this? You'd be surprised at how many people say no, so they don't get to, to a next step. Oh my God, my cost per lead is $20. Great, we're getting phone calls. Oh, that'd be great, yeah, so do that. And everybody out in the agency space is having this really long conversation about two-day follow-up, four-day follow-up, 10-day follow-up, fortunes of the follow-up. No, it's not, but it kind of is fortunes of the structural understanding of where the treasure is. Structural understanding where the treasure is. These are all different levers. Yeah. So if you're running a campaign and it worked for the first three, four or five days, cool. Did your client make money? No. Well, let's start playing with some levers. What is your educating the lead process look like? Like, are you doing any education at all? Are you any doing indoctrination at all? Are you running things like 90 second marketing videos, but 90 second biking videos or 90 second car wash videos or 90 second chiropractor videos? You're doing anything like that? All right. So you're not educating the leads. No. Do you have a follow-up sequence? Sneaky surveys, welcome text, phone call recordings, a white label call center, things like that. Nope, okay. Does your client have a structured sales process that allows these people to come in the door? Nope, okay. Uh, are you running ads to people far away? Yep, all right, well, there you go. And this is not 
perfect. This is just me spitballing. And as soon as I figure this out, I'll implement it to my agency and have a good time. But because you're part of the ask fame, get to look at the insides of this fun stuff. Here's another thing. On a spectrum, is that going to line up? Yeah, I think so, right? So we've got, that is not lined up at all. There we go. No idea who you are, or no idea. Ready to buy. On the left is a cold internet lead. On the right is a customer that came in. Most businesses really only have dealt with, let me just do this, aware of your client. Well, let's just say aware of the business. Most businesses, again, this is really rough. I know I haven't figured it out yet. Really only have dealt with this right here. People that are like on a spectrum or right around here. These are referrals. People that they've met, talked to, put time, effort, energy into. This is where most businesses exist. This is where most marketing exists. And you have a narrative with your client of saying like, hey, we're gonna generate you a whole bunch of leads and only a couple are gonna come through it, but it's not really solving that challenge. All you're doing is dealing with this right here. People that are aware of the business. When you really should be dealing with no idea to being aware of the business. How do you deal with leads that are unaware? Get them to sign up and then start doing your stuff and playing with these levers. Does this make sense? Some other people are saying, uh, one of the levers is thinking they signed up for something else. There you go. Uh, preconceived notions, expecting one thing, receiving something else. Great. It sounds like there's a problem with the ad and landing page next step, phone calls, stuff like that. Um, here's another one. All back time and quality. Is your client calling back leads or are you? By the way, I genuinely believe that most agencies will get to a point where they are calling back leads and scheduling. It's just gonna happen. Next six months or so, it'll be standard. So if all you're doing is giving your client low quality leads, you're all the way over here. I don't like this chart, I'm gonna delete it. All you're doing is giving your, quality, uh, your client low quality leads and not really addressing the progress and movement of all these levers. And if your front desks are not calling back leads, whether it's your front desk or your client's front desk, and they don't know how to have that conversation, you're screwed. Here's another one. Qualifying conversation. Are you having a qualifying conversation with this person on the phone, this potential lead? Hey, Mr. Johnson, I hear you loud and clear. Did you want to schedule an appointment? Great to see you then. That's very golden age, right? That's a function of a business that only had to move to an area, run an ad, and great, fine, perfect. It's very 80s and 90s, not anymore. Maybe 70s, 80s. Now you have to qualify in conversation. Hey, Mr. Johnson, I hear you loud and clear. It looks, looks like you're looking for X. Can you go ahead and ask you a couple questions? How long have you been having this problem? When do you want it solved? How are you looking to move? Do you understand how much this costs? When would you like to show up? Can we get you in tomorrow? Nope, we only have an appointment tomorrow, not two weeks. We gotta do it tomorrow. The doctor's out of town, not gonna happen. Yep, tomorrow. Okay, great, I'll come tomorrow. Great, I'll see you tomorrow. You're gonna have a five to 10 to 15 minute qualifying conversation to get somebody in the door. It's this type of stuff. Somebody says, educating leads has been a huge strategy for us, great info, can't go from the bar to the hotel <laughs> go from the bar and a few dates in the hotel. Yeah, like you can't go straight from the bar to the room, from the bar to the bedroom. That sounds better. You can't go straight from the bar to the bedroom. You have to have an in-between because you have to go on a couple dates, which is probably this right here. One of the reasons why my campaign for my back shops worked so well is because I was literally running ads saying, hey, everybody, my name is Jeff. I'm with Jeff Miller's Bike Shop, and there's three things to know before you buy your first high-performance bike. Why aren't you doing that? You can do it with your phone. That's it, you can just do it with this. And all of a sudden you're the chief marketing officer and your face is on ads, it's great. You'll get calls from the competition saying, can you do this for us? And you triple your, your retainer. Is it relevant? I would literally write emails saying, hey, 
This is why bike riding is relevant in 2018. Makes sense? Somebody says, we do that 100%, we have seven ISAs, couldn't leave it up to the client anymore. Yeah, like there's no reason to let these levers be pushed or pulled by anybody other than you. None. And this lever is, or this uh, chart is not complete at all. Not complete. But the structural understanding of why this is applicable to your business has to start off again with Mark, Michael Porter's five forces. There's stuff outside of your campaign that affects the results of your campaign. It's just how it works. For example, here. So what is stuff outside of the low quality lead campaign Facebook ad scenario that directly deals with it? You can run all the offers in that you want, but if you're running to people that can't afford it, it's always gonna be low quality leads. If it's too easy to sign up, schedule an appointment have your client feel like they're wasting time, they are gonna have a bad time. It's this type of stuff. And you're always playing with these levers, always. You don't get to like one and done any of this. All of a sudden bike riding became really irrelevant in 2020. My bike riding, my $10,000 bikes. But the guy next door, he sold out of all of his $200 bikes for like three months straight. My bike shop guy couldn't sell a 10K bike for his life. What happened? Did it anything do with the campaign? Did anything change or was it entirely the fact that, you know what? There was a quarantine, there was a pandemic, everybody freaked out and his dream clients customers which are coming from Latin America to take advantage of currency swaps could not buy stuff anymore. The campaign did not change at all. But you know it did, the distance to dream clients. Now all of a sudden the client was not in Miami. The client was in Latin America. We're not running ads in Latin America. Hope this makes sense. I'm gonna provide the structural understanding. Again, this is not complete. This is dependent upon you and your unique scenario and your relationship, but this should get you zero to 70, maybe 80% really fast. And if you ever wanna have a conversation with clients about low quality, you'd say, hey, Mr. Johnson, I hear you loud and clear. I'm gonna walk you through uh, some of the levers that increase the quality of your leads. Some of the stuff is in your control, some of the stuff is in my control, some of it's not. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all out here and then figure out what we're gonna be adjusting and changing moving forward here next month, what do you say? Great. Here's a short list of some of the levers. How are we addressing this? I can take the ones I control on the right, such as the income of the lead, how easy it is to sign up, and education, but there's stuff over on your side as well, such as, is it relevant? Such as, how long have you been in business? Such as, are you doing the callbacks and having a quality conversation? So we're gonna bring this to a close. I hope that this was, actually this is not at all the correct, let's just do this, the, the low quality lead levers you can adjust so your campaign works or doesn't. Probably a better 